All right, so we're going to do the first oil change on the 2022 Toyota 4Runner TRD Sport. All right, so one of the first things you're going to have to do is remove all these panels underneath. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to film any of that. It's really hard to get underneath. Um, I do have the the truck up on ramps. Otherwise, it's there's just not enough clearance, especially to get to where the oil plug is. That's way in the back. So. I initially started by taking off this piece of plastic first um, just because I wasn't sure what was holding this up so they have these hooks here in the front so you got to kind of like bring it down and slide it. This uh, panel although very flimsy it is extremely heavy so if you're not quite sure leave a bolt in the back of it so this is towards the back of the engine this is towards the front just because the thing is super heavy. Um, all of the fasteners are going to be 12 millimeter and then the drain plug is going to be a 14 millimeter. It's just uh, kind of a funky design here. I kind of wish I could leave this off, but the way it looks, there's a, a air vent that must come through and must do something with cooling because there's a screen on the back side here. So I'm not sure if that's something maybe to cool a, a bearing or something on the transmission. Just the way it goes through like that. Okay, so here's the filter that I got from the dealer, and the part number. Uh, it cost me $4.99, which I was kind of surprised that the dealer had such a good price on the filter, knowing that uh, there's a little bit of a process to install this. So it's a paper element, and then it gives you some special tools here. So if we open this up, there are instructions on the, the tabs here, so Toyota kind of knows in, a, in advance that this is a little bit of a process. So this is a special tool that's used to drain the oil filter. So you push that in and then it's supposed to release and the oil should hopefully come out this bottom part here. This is a new crush washer. I paid nothing for that. The uh, parts guy said when you buy a filter from us we include these at no cost, which is nice. You could probably reuse the old one. And then you get the, the O-rings. And then of course the uh, the filter, and that was all for five dollars, and that was from the dealer. That uh, I found pretty impressive. I think I'm gonna continue buying them from the dealer unless I can source them somewhere else for less. But it seems like it's a pretty good uh, pretty good deal. The oil that we're using is gonna be Mobile One Zero W20. This does have the correct specification for Toyota. Uh, if we take a look at it here gonna have the IL SAC GF6A which it needs to be so Toyota recommends I think it's every 10,000 miles that's why they're using a, a full synthetic 0W20 uh, I'm doing this one at 3,500 miles because it is a new car and the first change I want to do a little sooner then we'll probably run it to every five five or a little bit longer depending on when I get around to it all right so I have a draining you will need an extension to get onto the drain plug and you can see our our crush washer stuck to the bottom of the oil pan so we'll have to take that off um, to install a new one so let's get to the filter here all right so the only thing you want is this metal cap here um, i actually had to help hold the plastic top piece from spinning with this and you're just going to spin this out i believe there shouldn't be much oil that comes out of this maybe none so just a few drops and now I'll we'll use that special plastic tool to put that in there alright so this is the first time I've ever done this let's uh, insert the special tool and hopefully our oil pan or drain pan lines up oh man that goes really hard Ooh, there we go it works goes in actually pretty hard all right so we'll let that drain all right so the cap here is just gonna go around the bottom here you want to make sure that you got it seated around and in there in a proper groove so it doesn't strip over see I don't have it there I know at the dealership when we tried it on one we had a little bit of issue getting it started to get it right where it needed to be. There, now it's on, I can see it 
just slow. All right, so I got the oil filter off. This is not the right thing to use. It just strips over on the, the bottom of the cap here. I had to use a tremendous amount of force to keep the thing on there from spinning, and this thing did not want to give in either. It was extremely tight. So I know I've seen some other ones that they actually fit up further up in here and it's kind of grooved. I thought though, fitting around this, if this has got the right number of points and this was sold at the dealer, that that would fit on here nice and uh, this is not the case. Very, uh, very not nice. Ooh, I'm making a little bit, a little bit of a mess here. We should get that uh, put somewhere. Also, a smaller O-ring. That's probably why this went in so, uh, so hard here, or maybe this is supposed to pull the O-ring off that would go with this bottom plug here that was stuck in there. So I'll get everything cleaned up and then hopefully we get this reassembled. All right, so we got the new filter in, the new uh, outer O-ring here. Then if we flip it around, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a groove in there and that is gonna be where this O-ring here sits. And that's gonna be for that, that cap that we took out at the beginning. All right, so we'll put the cap on next. And on here it says cap tighten to 25 Newton meters. So I'm gonna assume the cap is this here and not this whole unit here. I'm not 100% sure where the 25 Newton meters come in. That might actually be this when I'm talking to cap. Um, on the instructions here it says clean the small o-ring install and tighten bolt so if this is considered a bolt to 12 and a half Newton meters plus or minus two and a half so maybe that's this here and this one here is actually tighter it should be that this breaks free before that but like I said when I first tried to pull this out the whole assembly was spinning which if you did that you'd end up with a super oily mess all right, so with the drain plug, we got the new crush sleeve on. Make sure you take the old one off or you might end up with some issues. Uh, mine took a little bit of effort to get off, but it's off now, so we'll install the drain plug. All right, so I got the oil warming up on the, the engine here. Should be all warm, ready to flow nicely. It takes 6.6 uh, .6 quarts is the capacity with the filter when you change it. I also, uh, Put the little cheat sheet here like i do with all my vehicles so 14 millimeter is going to be the drain plug 12 millimeter and 6.6 .6 is the amount of oil it needs so that way when you pop the hood you know what you need for tools saves you a little time okay so this skid plate cover whatever you want to call it so you're going to have there's going to be a bolt in here that's going to be that 12 and then skip one and then there's another one there and then you come up front you're gonna have one right here and one on the opposite side and those are all the 12s but you'll see you got this 10 that ties in this plastic piece here so you actually have to remove that before you can get this out but if you remember too there's also a hook on here that kind of hooks back into this uh, part of the bumper here part of the uh, front assembly so what I did was actually take the bolt for the plastic piece up in front here, right, oops, right here and remove that on both sides so that I took the whole, this whole unit and brought it down, which makes it really, really oxy. But uh, I'm not sure if that's the way you're supposed to do it. It's, it's difficult, I can tell you that. And the other thing is this metal skid plate did not like to line up with the bolts. I really had to, pry back to get this front hole to line up and that was with everything loose like just finger tight not to mention it's really difficult just to get this thing up in place to get a bolt started without like those hooks falling down on you so you're trying to like keep the front up and keep the back up and get a bolt started so uh, I don't I'm not sure this seems like kind of a ridiculous setup but there isn't any like plastic fasteners or anything like that you have to remove everything is uh, bolted bolted together so like I said if you want to try just pulling these out and then pulling just the metal cover down you could try that like I said I couldn't get this cover down because it was hooked back so you'd almost have to push it forward to bring it down to get it back out 
I just pulled the whole plastic assembly off. Maybe, maybe you don't have to do that. Maybe this can just stay in place and then just pull the metal one. So maybe for next time, that's what I'll try. All right, so to wrap it up, there really isn't too much to the actual oil changing part. It's that skid plate that's probably the most difficult. Everything else seems to be pretty uh, well thought out, like most Toyotas. So, and then biggest thing is the park it level, and it says to let the engine uh, rest for five minutes before you check the final level on the oil. So, all right, that'll be it for now.